we've got the Defender back on the channel and we're doing an MPG test. In a previous video, I suggested that I was going to daily the TVR Cerbera because I was so shocked at the results we got when we did an MPG test. I think I'm going to daily it. That's, that's better than the bloody Defender. Now, it was a bit of a flippant comment. However, we're now in the Defender and we're off to the pumps to find out. So, filled to the brim, and now we're getting back in the car to go out on our round trip. One thing I wanted to pull over and talk about just before we got on our journey to do this MPG test was the way that you fill up a Land Rover Defender. The fuel cap has got an overflow. The Defender will keep going forever because it will just simply trickle out down the back. You only notice that you've done it because you've got a big pool on the floor of fuel that's overflowed at the back. So when we come back and we fill up at the end to do our actual test, we are doing it to the first click. Anyway, let's get back on the road. The Land Rover information is telling us that this car will do 28.3 miles to the gallon. We already know that the TVR is going to do 21.3 miles to the gallon. That is a 4.2 litre V8 supercar munching sports car, British sports car. We've devised the same plan. We're doing the exact same route. We've filled up at the exact same petrol station. Why is it that people do use these cars on a daily basis? And I had a few thoughts. Firstly, the people in the past who would buy a Land Rover were generally arable farmers. They were the most capable cars for going off-road, being off-road, doing off-roady stuff. A lot of farmers would run them on red diesel. It's not, it's not necessarily any more fuel efficient. It is exactly the same. But that also means that fuel for farmers is cheaper, which means that farmers have never really been that worried about miles to gallon in a Defender, which means that the market has never driven really a requirement for these cars to become more fuel efficient which would be engine improvements or aerodynamics. It's all been driven by regulation, not consumer demand. And in my opinion, that is why this car, as it was still being sold all the way up until 2016, was fundamentally the same as the car that was designed in the 50s. That is why these Defenders in the modern day are actually incredibly, incredibly out of touch and actually incredibly fuel inefficient. But this is a car that gets you from A to B, and it will get you from A to B, even if B is the top of Ben Nevis. Uh-oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. So we've got an issue. We were never to have known this. What are we gonna do about that? Wow, we're gonna have to do a diversion. That's frustrating. We're now having to do a bit of a detour. So we've just done the motorway section to test real world driving. You know, a lot, of, a lot of cars now just sit at 65, 70 miles an hour on the motorway, if you're being good. So that's something that we wanted to test to give us some real world combined mileage. But now we're gonna get back in the car to our new route. It was on the route to Beaver Castle that something came over me. I did not want to be wringing the neck of the Defender like I had done in the TVR's spirited driving. You could argue that the car is not designed for that and it leads you down the path it wants to be driven in. More than likely, it was just the fact that it was an amazing day out in a car that I absolutely love and I wanted to drive it with the respect that it deserves. This also was a true reflection of how I genuinely do drive the Defender on a daily basis. The car is a 2014 Land Rover Defender 90 hardtop and it has got the 2.4 litre Puma engine in it. This car has got no engine modifications. It has got no gearbox modifications. It's not been remapped. 
We've not got any non-standard tires. These are the factory wheels and tires. The only difference with this Defender to what perhaps you might buy from the showroom is that it has had all the interior sound deadened. So there's a little bit of weight to add on that. So bear that in mind when you're thinking about it. I think the weight is around about 25, 30 kilos worth of sound deadening, something like that. Um, but what we have done is stripped out the back. So it might sort of balance that out. I'm pretty sure this is gonna give us a really real world accurate representation of one of these 2014 defenders but if you were to have got one that is stock you would get an accurate representation of it now we're on the way back going through proper defender territory here and we are on the way back to the petrol station to fill up and let's get some results of this mpg test I do love this car. It's a funny thing, I, it's always there, it's, it's, it's available to drive whenever, but more than, more than often I choose like the Range Rover or one of the other cars. If I get in the Range Rover, I've got no emotion and passion about it. In the Defender, I'm like, I'm excited, I'm going out in the Defender, and you just don't get that from many other cars. I've said it before, again, on previous videos on the channel, it's just like a massive Tonka truck. I absolutely love it. It makes me feel like a kid, it makes me smile, it makes me, want to drive by today's standards a defender they're not very good cars like if you think of what a car is meant to do and how safe it's meant to be and how fuel efficient it's meant to be and easy to drive it is comfortable all of those things it's bad at but the one thing it is good at is making you smile we're back at the pump at the same pump that we were before so we're going to get it filled up now, we're not worried about the price because we know fuel is very expensive. It's the amount of litres we've used that we care about right now. Going, let's see, two litres, three litres, four litres, five litres. So that's 5.87 and that has brimmed it. Again, I'm a little surprised by this and it's not in the way that you'd think. The brochure, they advertise it as 28.3 mpg. We were on different types of roads. We did a bit of dual carriageway, we did a bit of back roads, we went through villages. We gave it a really good mix. The other thing we've got to talk about is the slightly different route. Again, we got that roadblock. The difference was effectively calculated. We've just done it on Google Maps. It was about a mile. The calculation we've done is based upon brimming the tank, as you saw us do, at 5.87 litres, which is around about 1.293 gallons. Okay, that's the UK version, by the way, if you're watching this in the US. That is 25.5 mpg from the Defender 90 hardtop. My predictions in the previous video that we talked about with the TVR, that has proven to be wrong. I was wrong. The, TVR did so well that I thought it would outperform the very heavy box shaped Defender. And the only thing I can think is two things. One, it's a diesel engine. Secondly, in the TVR test, I was doing spirited driving. In this, it, it, it almost the car made me not want to drive it so fast. And I think that's something interesting. If I was to drive the TVR, in the sort of slightly slower, more gentle, less spirited way that I drove the Defender, there's a very good chance it would have done 25 miles to the gallon as well. If somebody said to me, which car would it be? You can only keep one. I think I would have to say, the one that I would keep is the Defender. I suppose the reason is purely down to the fact that I feel a much closer sense of connection with the Defender. So yeah, there we go. Defender, more economical than I first thought. Thank you again for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please make sure you hit the subscribe button for more videos to come and we'll see you next time.